the series with a good writer and start to build, start building that storyline and that and those plots and those those arcs we're gonna want to care about. All right, I'm glad you mentioned that. What segue? What segue? Because you you touched on something. I don't know if you touched on it. I'm older than you. I'm old, Dion. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna die, Dion. I hate to tell you, I'm gonna uh, die. But we're before all I do. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the resurrection of comic books on a big level. But what you touched on is it used to be you get a hot writer on a comic, it would sell. You get mm -hmm. a hot artist on a comic, it will sell. In the last 10 years, with some success in that area, it hasn't been a guarantee anymore when you get the hot writer on a book, you get the hot artist on a book. Why do you think fans have turned away from the artist of the week or the writer of the week hopping on a book? Grant Morrison's name is not selling what it used to sell. Mm. Alan Moore's name is not selling what it used to sell. You stick mm. Jim Lee on a book, it's not selling what it used to sell. Rob Liefeld isn't selling what it used to sell. Why do you think this is? Hmm. Ooh, that's a really, really tough question, man. Because we oh, do it man. for the culture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Put me in the hot seat here. So why do I think the pretty much almost the death of the comic book superstar is sense, right? The writer mm -hmm. or the artist and why, why, why isn't the sales coming from that? And I think... I think for the most part, it might be that we're looking at, I think we're looking at more so the character rather than the person delivering the goods, so to speak. Um, I think it's, we're so branded into maybe Spider-Man, X-Men, Superman, Batman, that maybe we're caring less about some of the other minor characters or the B or C listers of the comic universes that they're inhabiting so um you know and I, and I do think the films also can play a part of gathering interest um for all these companies like black panther comes out all of a sudden you see all these black panther trades Guardians of the galaxy comes out they get new number ones now they're getting trades um you know even monica rambeau now showing up and wandavision and now going to show up in the Marvels. Guess what? Well, now she's got a five issue minute series release. So I think part of it might be branding. Part of it might be more of the character we're following rather than the artist or the writer behind the book. You know, the artist and writer can jump off and we're we're ready to continue because we're so invested in the character that but it doesn't matter. Maybe. That's stop there. Guess. Wait, Diaz, yeah, stop there. I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh -huh. But I, I'm glad you said, from the mainstream point of view, we're following the characters, the books. But in mm -hmm. the indie comic space, you got the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. On this show, I talk about creating a following, about influencers. We are living an influence, influencer age, so to speak. So you have people like the EVSs, the Eric Julys. You have yes, the comic sir. gate crowd. They've managed on an independent level to brand themselves where it's more about them than their books. Mm -hmm. So on the mainstream, it's gone away from having a Grant Morrison or a Jim Lee on a book to, hey, let's just focus on this character, this book. But on the independent level, it's gone full circle. Now it's about that creator and less about that book. Do you agree or disagree? Am I making sense? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're making sense. I think you're making sense. The indie, the indie scene's a little bit more tighter, I guess. It's a little bit more closed in, but in a sense, you know who everyone is, so to speak. And you're not, you're buying into now an ideology or a personality or politics or somebody you're becoming a fan and a follower of somebody rather than the product itself. So you're more willing to buy in any product that that individual put out because in the end, you're really buying into the product of the person rather than the actual material that they're making. So um, I think you're absolutely right. I think especially with this weird, this, this culture war thing going on in the internet and uh, the social media influencer age, like you talked about, 
Um, we're becoming fans of the individual and we're willing to rally and, and support them no matter what they put out because we align with their beliefs and we align with like, we're, we're totally buying in to them as a person and a online identity. I like that. Everybody loves a good underdog story. That's what made the Mighty Ducks so popular <laughs> growing up as a kid. Joe McPhee's in the chat. He's like, yo, this generation doesn't care about creative teams. You touched on that uh, just now. It's moved yeah. away from the creator in the mainstream to the books. So it doesn't matter who's writing or drawing it. People are going to mm -hmm. pick it up to a certain extent. And on the independent level, we're buying into the EVSs. We're buying into the Dan Fragger. But the thing people forget, a lot of the big names in Comicsgate, they already have established fan bases. They're already coming in with a fan base. Even mm -hmm. uh, Young Ripper, he already had a fan base. So these are right. not people that are starting from, grand, uh, from zero. They already have established fan bases inside and outside of comic books that they're bringing to the table. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You're almost, you're pretty much better off becoming a social media influencer first, then making comics second. Like, whatever you can get your following from on that other sphere, get that first, and then circle into comics you want to do comics, because that'll give you a, a big leg up on just starting from scratch directly. I'm a writer for comics, or I'm big into comics. You, If you could do video games, you could do movies, you could do political views on anything or whatever right you build up that following and then you make a comic about that genre that you're that or that medium that you're really uh, passionate about and then you're good to go that it yep. seems it seems i meant might we be see it future. happen all the time mm -hmm. uh what's the dude name that does the uh anime content uh was it black star media he did the demon rush he got a comic book well ma manga mm -hmm. he has a card game he made a pilot anime episode uh for forever news forever world what's it for never world whatever you know he's working on a comic book itself so mm. we've seen this work with influencers time and time again where they build a following then one day they decide yo i'm gonna release a book mm -hmm. or i'm gonna release a t-shirt a hoodie you know how many big youtubers make millions of dollars just selling t-shirts and hoodies mm -hmm. it's crazy right right Nah, man, you ain't telling no lie, man. You ain't telling no lie, dude. For real, for real. The game, the game is, uh, and I think that's maybe in the entertainment industry in general of just kind of switching over. I'm not sure if the Hollywood, the acting stars are feeling this kind of way as well, where it's like, you know, the social media influencers are kind of, those are numbers, those are eyeballs, and that's currency to whoever's, who wants to hire them or put them in their film or put them in their short. And they know that, hey, that's that's 500,000 people online who might want to check it out. That's a million eyeballs online that might want to check that out. And it's, it's becoming the same thing for comic books as well, where if, um, if, you know, if you're not that influencer, if you're not that person with that base, you're kind of almost invisible, even if you do write for Marvel and DC. I was to reading Joe's comments. Joe has a link to join this conversation. He wants to hide that in the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say I call BS on indie side of things that sector is stuck in the older wizard this is what's popular mentality wait it's why they complain so much about mainstream promote uh, what's that oh promote now promote about now. how mainstream promote now huh what do you think hmm. of that uh, what's it? They are they are forced to build on their name to get people to look that way. Um, yeah, I mean, to a certain degree, you know, that as an indie person, it's like this is who I am. This is my first book, or what? You have to get people to more get that personal relationship with you rather than your character may or may not do it by itself. You know, so it's really on more of you and putting your face behind it having uh, not just the man behind the curtain, but a man in front of the stage presenting something to folks that I might be interested in. So, hey, I appreciate that Mobile Trader Network. It says, great dis great discussion, gents. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah, um, we definitely do. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, 
I mean, what do you what do you think, man? What do you think about the, I guess, to basically your question, you know, why do you think that the the mainstream writers and the creative teams are not being followed right now? There he is. There is Joe. Hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> Wait, like, let's let Joe, Joe start at this. Let's let Joe answer this question. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Now, Arthur asked a great question there. And the reason why I call BS on it is because when you truly think about it, everybody wants to separate, you know, mainstream from indie. But what what makes indie, you know, size stick out is because they have to make a name for themselves to have people look their way. When you think about the EBSs in the world, they don't think about what book they wrote that is so popular that you associate that book with EBS. It's not, it's the other way around. It's EBS with his plethora of books that he's maybe putting out maybe like once a month, once a year or whatever he feels like doing a project because his name carries more weight than the projects that he works on as opposed to with, you know, other companies like your image your dark horse and stuff like that. It's always about the IP. Even when I publish stuff, I don't really put my name out there in front of the actual titles. But when you promote that title, that IP has to resonate in some form or some fashion. Now, if you like my artwork, you like my writing, and you associate that and you come back for the project because of who I am, that's one thing. But in the bottom line of it is it's still me promoting that IP first. I have to promote the IP and I have to promote the actual branding or the company name before it becomes about Joe McPhee. And I feel that others should follow that mentality, but because most of us grew up in that 90s wizard era, and that's what I fought for this, reason why I call it BS on it, because that mentality <laughs> stuck around with a lot of the former people who were in comics that moved over away from quote unquote mainstream now and they're up here it's like in yesterday's years and in yesterday's standards this is how things worked and it still will work to this day and it's like I don't know because it's not catching the younger eyes at all damn damn you just threw, threw it mini down mic man drop. Where's my camera? <laughs> mini mic drop <laughs> <laughs> need the air horns man need the air uh, sound bar <laughs> Damn, man. Yeah, no joke. That is no joke, man. That's that's for real, for real. I mean, why do you you mentioned the youth? I guess question for you would be why you think comic books are not, I guess, meshing well or catching the attention with the youth. Um, we seem like there's an age gap up with comic books, and the youth are kind of turned into other thing, other mediums besides besides comics. Why do you think that is? because the fandom is currently toxic because the older fandom is so toxic with one another and they're not sharing the love of why they like it with the younger crowd mm -hmm. and the younger crowd is constantly seeing the petty arguments and everything and then with the ips themselves being rewritten and seeing how others react to it it's kind of like a turnoff it does not appeal to them now, the one thing that I will say here, and I always lump manga with comics. To me, they're all the same. Not to me, but go for it. They, they're all the same. The reason why I say they're all the same is, is just the technique that is being used catches the younger people's eye. Mm -hmm. Now, there's something about that technique and the way that it's, it, it's done. Plus the reinforcement with the animation, with the anime and all the other stuff that catches their attention that feeds better into it as opposed to American style comics where now you have all of this infighting amongst creators and amongst fans, amongst anybody who loves the older stuff. You never get a consistency of, of a group of people to say, we love Iron Man and here's why Iron Man is good. It's more along like, we love Iron Man, but you're wrong for for like liking that he's an alcoholic, or you're wrong though because you know you're wrong for liking him because he got a pacemaker, or you're wrong because <laughs> you know he got this organic armor and and, his <laughs> and all this other stuff. It's like that's stupid. Why okay, can't you so, say like, hey, 